Pod Swag offers merch from all your favorite podcasts, like Comedy Bang Bang, How Did This Get Made, and of course, Spontane Nation. They've got shirts, hoodies, pins, posters, mugs, stickers, even gift cards, and so much more to choose from. Shop the full Spontane Nation collection at podswag.com slash PFT and use the code SPONT for 40% off your purchase until December 31st. That's podswag.com slash PFT, code S-P-O-N-T. Ha ha! I caught you listening to the podcast. <laughs> oh, the chase is always better than the kill, my friends. Isn't it? Isn't it more fun to chase after an elephant than to kill it? You know how you and the elephant are having a great time. I'm going to get you. And then the elephant runs away. You're chasing after it. Then you pull out an elephant gun. And the elephant is like, you named that gun specifically to kill me? That's weird. I don't understand why... Look, I know I'm a cuck and a soy boy and all that. Who looks at an elephant and is like, I gotta kill it. I gotta. I have a friend. This is is hard for me to talk about. I have a friend who got to be around elephants and like, like up close and touch them and stuff like that. And I did not realized this was a thing that I had a jealousy for. I well, Elephants, always in the back of my mind, like, they're cool. Then this guy shows me these pictures. I lost my mind. Like, what? what? When did, where, where did this happen? Where, when did you, how did, why do you get to do this? <laughs> like, there, look, there, here in Los Angeles, there's people who greet your good news with, why did that happen to you? <laughs> over over career stuff. That, that's how I was being about him getting to be in proximity with elephants. Now look, I've been around some, I've been around some animals, folks. Cats, dogs, snatch. <laughs> some birds. Uh... One time I I was on a TV show where there was a vat of hermit crabs. <laughs> I famously went to Australia with Comedy Bang Bang on tour. We went to a preserve, a wildlife preserve. This was this was <laughs> this was like a halfway house for animals where these animals had all been injured in some way, like like kangaroos that have been hit by a car. And they're like, here, just come. You can come be here. I promise you no cars will come close to you. But people are going to come try to pet you. Deal? Emus just walking around. An albino peacock. (laughs) But the best was this big fat pig. Just a, a pig. A big pig. That was at the entrance. We were about to walk into this place. And we see this big fat pig. (laughs) Is in this sort of shed. It's almost like this was his office. And he is eating out of this industrial sized bag of popcorn. (laughs) And so when we walk in and the woman, you know, we pay the woman to go into the place. We say, hey, by the way, uh, what's up with that pig? And she goes, oh my God. She comes running out. Wilbur, no! (laughs) Wilbur was not supposed to be in there doing what he was doing. (laughs) I have a video of it. I will will have to post it when this episode comes out. It was incredible. Biggest pig I've ever seen. Anyway, elephants... Get at me. If you're an elephant and you'd like to meet up, let me know. 
I am represented by the United Talent Agency. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. Oftentimes, utilizing details gleaned from the aforementioned freeform conversation and inspired by a location provided by our special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ooh, second applause for the introduction of Eben Schletter. Almost 200 episodes, only the second time that has happened. Not a good ratio. <laughs> My friends... I am very excited to invite this person back to the show. We were just together on stage in San Diego. <laughs> the time shift. The time shift. She is one of the hosts of one of my favorite podcasts. It is a, it is a morning of listen. As soon as it comes out, this is true of both versions. Of the free version and the premium version. As soon as I see that they are available, I listen to them. The name of the podcast, Throwing Shade. She's also the author of a book called Feminasty, Long Subtitle. <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, Erin Gibson. Thank you yeah. so much. For the introduction I deserve. That's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being so bold as to not even attempt the subtitle. I, uh, it is hard for me to do. I was going to go for it, and I was like, I'm, if I mess it up, I'll be so mad at myself. Well, it's. I think it's better to just do what you did. <laughs> just say long subtitle, and I'm going to be suggesting it from now on. <laughs> the subtitle is How to... A Complicated Woman's Guy. <laughs> <laughs> That is immediately wrong. How to read a complicated woman's guide yeah, to, to surviving the patriarchy mm -hmm. without, without drinking, drinking yourself to, to death. death. Interesting that that's the part I remembered the most clearly. Do you want to ask me if I wanted to do a subtitle? Because the answer was no. <laughs> do you know what? I, I honestly, was forced to do a subtitle. I honestly did want to ask you that because that is such a common thing with humor book. Anything that's remotely funny. It's like, you got to throw a subtitle on there. They all do it now. Yeah. They have to explain everyone what they're going to read give yeah. everybody the entire book on the cover yeah so that you can save them the time of having to read the whole book and the subtitle cannot be simple it has to be long yeah and guess what i didn't have one for a long time and then we were in our my husband and i were on our honeymoon in ireland and i went to a very snobby bookstore <laughs> in cork i don't know name a small town i was there uh uh, uh barry yeah barry barry <laughs> ireland <laughs> And there were just all these really verbose titles. And I just flat out took two of them and then just made joke versions of them and then said it to my <laughs> editor. And she was like, I love it. <laughs> it's not quite plagiarism, but they, Ireland really does subtitles real long. Oh, these were Irish books. Yeah. Irish <laughs> books. I was at, it was like, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan Taylor Mc. Gunakati and the tale of the twice cursed. Oh, like castle. that! I was like, <laughs> these are so long, like They're, Harry Potter ripoffs, like that kind yeah, of thing. But like from the dawn of time, right. like eighteen uh, hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tale of the thrice baked potato. <laughs> yeah, you bake it. You broil it. Then you flame it. <laughs> Put those grill marks on there. Well, I love a flame broiled potato. <laughs> Aaron, I have a question for you. Yes. This comes to us from our previous episodes guest. That question is, <laughs> if you could be killed with any weapon, not gun, what would it be and why? Oh, it has to be a weapon. It can't be like poison. Because I have a dream. I would consider poison a weapon. Okay, well, this is this is a side thing, but it'll get me, I think, thinking to how I would like to be, how I'd like to murder myself or <laughs> secret my own murder. Is I that what this feel is? like that's all I'm going to be thinking. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I feel like there's not going to be a retirement plan for me because of the way Social Security is going to be sure. run out and all this stuff. So yeah. I have a fantasy that when I'm like 80, 
79 mm -hmm. around that zone. Just before my knees give out, <laughs> I'm going to go to Paris and I'm going to eat a pill sandwich uh -huh. looking at the Eiffel Tower, which I'm not, I don't give a fuck about Paris really, but it seems right. like a poetic way of going. I think it'd be, I, I, so I can't disagree. Pills in the brie. Yeah. Yeah. Pickles <laughs> and bread. <laughs> if you really want to get adventurous in France, go to the Seine and get eaten by one of those uh, carnivorous catfish. Excuse me? Is that a real thing? <laughs> They've come up on this show a few times. There, <laughs> I watched, um, it was either, I think it was, was it Blue Planet or Planet Earth? Uh, the most recent edition of one of those. And there's these catfish that have started eating meat. They essentially, they wait for pigeons, birds to get a drink of water by the banks of the I, river. And then they come out and they eat them. I'm going to throw up in my own mouth. <laughs> Don't do it in mine. No, sorry. No. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to throw up in your mouth. <laughs> a little. <laughs> well, the, you know, everything has to adapt. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Look. Just trying to find the positive side of this. Coyotes are coming down. They're coming down from the mountains because the because the, there's no water up there anymore. We're taking their water. And then they're like, hey, it's great down here. Soon we'll be in charge. Look at all these teacup terriers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> num, num, num. <laughs> Look at all these outdoor cats. <laughs> then also you have the, the film stars coming down uh, to do television. <laughs> and it then, all started when Julia Roberts did Friends. Now she's doing an Amazon series. I or Hulu. Can you one of those? Who cares? Amazon. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa is very territorial. The weapon I think that would be <laughs> <laughs> It's a tough thing because nothing kills you instantly. A harpoon, but that's still a gun. <laughs> I would say a harpoon counts. I would say a harpoon counts. Well, we'll get it over with the quickest but the, the, possible. But the aim has to be so good. Spot on. But they're pretty so big. So good. You they're could, pretty big. You could harpoon yourself full <laughs> wild and crazy guy style through the side of the head. <laughs> I never thought you'd be doing it yourself. Oh, <laughs> I right. think I don't think you have to do it. Let me re, let me check the question. I think you're right. I think he you killed could, with. Yeah, you could go on German Craigslist and have somebody do this for you. Which is pronounced how? <laughs> Craigslist. <laughs> Craigslist. If you could be killed with any weapon, not gun, what would it be and why? Yeah, be killed. So yeah. you don't have to kill yourself. I think a harpoon gun is a gun, though, right? <laughs> well, it's got gun in the name, sure. Right. But I mean, a koala bear is not a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, but it has to be a weapon. I think guillotine. Wow. That would be fast. Guillotine, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> if they've gone to the farmer's market and had that blade sharpened. I think the guillotine was a was a response to chopping people's heads off with an, with axe? an axe. Because sometimes it would take more than one chop. Yeah. There was somebody, some aristocrat that was beheaded and they used an axe and it took like, I want to say 30 times to get <gasps> the head off. And he was like, guys, I have a better way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn over. <laughs> he flips over and puts his head in the basket the other way. <laughs> that they would do that to those nice wicker baskets. Did you? Straight I know, from Pier 1. That's its own industry, is making wicker baskets for guillotines. <laughs> Have you ever heard the thing where they would like, like your your head is still alive for a, a moment yeah. after it gets chopped off and they, they would like grab the head up and chill the body. Now that I say it. It's and ridiculous. then you would... You would just, that's a lot of pressure of what you're going to say when, yeah. your, when your head has been disembodied. I don't know. What do you say? I like ice cream. Do you say something funny? You know, I'm going to miss all the ice cream. <laughs> I'm going to miss all the ice cream. <laughs> Shout out to your mom. What are you going to do? <laughs> you got to say, fuck you. Oh, yeah. That's gotta right. be. If somebody just chopped your head off, <laughs> you got you. If you don't say. Make them laugh till you're dead. That's if what my your, <laughs> Exactly. If your head is still able to speak a moment after being chopped off, if you don't say fuck you, <laughs> you're, you're missing out on the greatest opportunity. <laughs> 
Oh, the only justice is that there is no regret after you've died. True. <laughs> right? True. Put that on a shirt. People, Sell that on Facebook. People say that, that, you know, after you're dead, what do you care what people think about you or say about you or whatever, but it's kind of hard, kind of hard to get to that place until you are dead. <laughs> yeah. And what if you believe in ghosts? Then the, the moot point. Do you believe in ghosts? I do sometimes. When, do, what are those times? Because you're raised Catholic, right? Yes. So I feel like Catholic is a form of voodoo, witchcraft, uh, you know, tall tales. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no offense to anybody. Campfire story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, slash sexual occult. Um, <laughs> I do think that part of my ghost believing has to do with the fact that I was raised that God was watching me at all times. Mm -hmm. And so that began the like haunting of Aaron Gibson. Right. <laughs> slash. It's very difficult if you raise staunch Catholic to think that you could, you know, do things with your own body in the privacy of a bathroom. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that's where it started out. And then also, I think there's just things in this world you can't explain. Like when there's a, when you're, when the cabinet just pops open, you know, it mm -hmm. could just be that the person who put that cabinet together was a ding dong. Right. Didn't do it right. So it just won't close correctly. Don't you think most things can be attributed to ding dongs? I, I think if you look at it logically, ghosts are just a manifestation of, us letting ding dongs off the hook. If mm. those, if you never have to say, "Oh, this was faulty," IKEA, right? Craftsmanship. It's a ghost. It's much, a much easier life, right. right? So ghosts exist sort of to help us be better people. <laughs> yeah, because we're we're having more empathy for, or what I have empathy for them. We're just excluding them from our thoughts entirely. <laughs> What people the, that don't care about their jobs. One of the dumbest things I ever heard about ghosts, which made me not believe. Also, I, I stopped believing in ghosts when someone was like, well, why doesn't anyone ever get haunted by a cow? <laughs> why is it always humans? <laughs> to which I say, fantastic point. <laughs> Let me say this. Uh, in terms of intelligence. Snake? Snakes get killed all the time. It, all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> snakes get killed all the time. And you and are we talking about it? No. no. If let's say if intelligence, you don't wake up in the middle of the night and there's a ghost snake on your chest. That would. Fuck it's me. always Abraham Lincoln or that somebody. You know, <laughs> it's always him. <laughs> Haven't you got better things to do? Look at Jimmy Carter, great ex-president. He's building houses. What's Abe Lincoln doing? Haunting his old bedroom. <laughs> Thank you. Weirdo. Waste of time. Yeah. Um, I feel like if, let's say if intelligence is the deciding factor, okay, as to what gets to be a ghost and what doesn't, what about ghost dolphins? Yeah. And can they be on land? Do you I mean, have, like, what rules exist for these things? Do they just have to haunt, like, part of the ocean where they where they got caught up in a <gasps> To which a no net. one's going to see them. <laughs> Fishermen? The, the odds of someone happening upon that exact spot are very slim. I would get, I would murder a kitten to see a ghost dolphin. <laughs> what if <laughs> that's what, if, what I because I, I think that would be a spectacular sight. So what if you hear a noise? You're you're lying in bed. You hear a noise. Yeah. You wake up and you see just a dolphin floating there <laughs> at the foot of your bed. I would th that nothing would make me feel like the, that life is worth it more than seeing that. Th that would make me have like hope again. <laughs> we got to fight for this world. Do you know? Here's the thing that I'm I'm holding on for. Mm -hmm. This is this is one of the things that keeps me going. And I thought of this the other day because I was, I was at a ba I was at a baseball game last night. Um, that was a game that went on for 19 innings, <laughs> and so I had a lot of time to think about a lot of stuff. And I thought, man, I hope when I get to be in my 70s, however however old you are when this happens, I get that nice deep quilted pattern on the back of my neck. <laughs> It's, like a hunt, like a hunting jacket. Yeah, I feel like I feel like a British hunting. Jacket. Yeah, it's like a real badge of honor. Like you, it really feels like I earned all these creases, <laughs> this beautiful waffle pattern on the back oh. of my neck. And then, do you? It, does that remain if you're a ghost? Do you get to keep that? I feel like you get. Well, I think that there's varying. Uh, uh, schools of thought. Certainly in a lot of fiction, we see that ghosts, um, if they're bad ghosts, um, they become scary. But if they're good, if they're good people who die and become ghosts, they, they, they become their most attractive selves. Like whatever point in their lives. Like a Jessica Rabbit ghost. <laughs> I 
the only much, sexy person I could think of much, in the moment. <laughs> Not even a human. Much like Jessica Rabbit was attracted. <laughs> Now, I'm basing this on, did you see The Haunting of Hill House? No, I don't watch those movies because I'm too scared. I can barely, I can barely watch suspense films. I, I used to be, I used to be a not horror person. And then I really, there's, there's a better way to say that. <laughs> I used to be not horror person. <laughs> but then I see horror and say yes. Um, a friend of mine uh, changed it for me and he said, if it's, if it's supernatural, I can watch it because it's fake. The only thing is devil stuff because race Catholic that still stays with me after I see a movie, even though that's the fakest thing in the world, <laughs> the devil, the devil, but it's still like from, from years of Catholicism and being scared of the devil, any, any horror movie that has devil stuff, no matter how dumb it is, it still will kind of Does stay with Mike me. Meyer, does Halloween, where does that fit in? Cause that's like evil incarnate, right? He's evil incarnate. It, it started as like a slasher movie and then it became that he was sort of this unstoppable evil force. Right. And it got more and more absurd as the movies went on. Okay, so now he's just like a full, cl- like he's a he's a clown. He's a full clown. Squeaky shoes and all. Squeaky shoes and all. You can hear him coming from a mile away. He can't kill anybody anymore. <laughs> Everyone's like, I, I know who that is. <laughs> I can hear if he's walking or running. <laughs> or if he's on a bicycle. He never runs. He does it. He's too cool. That's he's a- too cool. <laughs> if you have confidence problems, look at that guy. Yeah. Just takes his time. Yeah. Doesn't let anyone rush him. Does it apologize? <laughs> he, he never. One of the things I love about Michael Myers and I admire about him, he never apologizes. Ever. <laughs> he never says. He is who he is. You take him or you leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like on paper he is like the most, he is the most like put together human being. <laughs> he is. Let me tell you something. Great sense of style. Like that jumpsuit. Yeah. It, jumpsuit. If you can, if you can pull it off, They're it back. looks good. They're back. They're not for everybody. He looks terrific. He's got the he's got the mask. Beautiful porcelain skin. <laughs> Michael Myers' number one thing is hashtag self care. Yes, he's always saying, "How can I make my life better?" That's right. Yeah, that's right. I admire it. What do, What do I need to do today for me? Yeah, you're welcome to do whatever you need to do for you. If what I have to do today is kill you. You're welcome to try not to be killed by me. Separate. We're on. We're on separate paths that occasionally cross over. You do you is his <laughs> mantra. <laughs> Michael Myers, you do you. Oh, can I tell you the crazy thing about yes, ghosts? Aaron. Okay, sorry. Tell me Before the crazy thing about ghosts. The crazy thing about ghosts. Is... Okay, apparently I I went down this dark hole of ghost dorkdom and one of the, some idiot was like oh i know i figured out why ghosts travel through walls and it's because according to this person if you have remodeled your house there probably at one point was a doorway oh, there and so that's why the ghosts go through the walls and come on i just can't i just can't get over it and the so, ghost is that dumb here's what <laughs> what would what is kind what could be a reassuring spin on that is if the ghosts are that clueless about the the remodel of the home, they don't know you're there because you weren't there when they were there before. Yeah. So why would you ever be scared of them? It's like, look at this idiot. They're, they're not. <laughs> he, he, he thinks there's a day room there. That's my man cave. That's my Xbox gaming <laughs> hole. They don't know what an Xbox is. They're not going to mess with your computer. <laughs> why aren't they scared of stuff too? Why aren't go- why don't ghosts see technology and be like, "Whoa, now I'm the one who's scared." Fantastic. They see a f- <laughs> iPhone light up and they're like, "What the fuck? I'm out of here." <laughs> Back to Hades for this ghost. Miss, don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Missed. That was good. Oh uh, no, Let's, I think we'll, we'll pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> we'll cut this out, right? We'll cut it. Aaron, have you personally had? experiences with the supernatural my mom thinks that my grandpa haunts my grandma's house because my grandpa had an aneurysm in the backyard now the only evidence i have to that is one day a mylar balloon got loose from a bedroom and started floating down the hallway to which i say isn't that what mylar balloons do (laughs) everything that went wrong in my grandma's house it was grandpa's here and one time my cousin okay this this isn't even scary but 
My cousin, who was three, used to talk to one corner of the room. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be the corner that faced the backyard where my grandpa had an aneurysm. By the way, my grandpa didn't technically die in the backyard. He technically died at the hospital days later. (laughs) Oh, so the aneurysm so happened in the backyard. The incident happened, but mm-hmm. the death didn't occur to yes. the hospital. So my grandpa's ghost got in, uh, caught a taxi or whatever, and then went back home. Yeah. However they travel, I don't know. Right. Missed. <laughs> so he used to he used to say, he used to, I mean, he had an imaginary friend, and his name was yeah. Echo. And he would say, hi, Echo, and talk to Echo. And everyone was like, he's talking to, He's my mom would be like, he's talking to dad. And I was like, he's, was it grandpa's name Echo? No. Case closed. <laughs> was this her father? Yes. I think people like oh. to think about ghosts because it gives them a sense of safety. And like, especially when it's parents, it's a, yeah. it's a thing of like, oh, I'm not alone anymore. That's much easier to believe in a ghost than to think about, no, you you have, you literally have no one in your life who cares about you. I, I, I hated that idea as a kid. Like the idea that, that your loved ones would be watching from heaven Awful. because it was... Again, how it, do you jerk off? How do you jerk off? It was it was horrible to me to think about that barrier. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Also, my idea of I couldn't conceive of heaven. It just seemed like even today, like to try to imagine what heaven is like. It's just I still have the same idea of when I was a child of just like it's like a limbo, like a weird limbo. And everyone's just up there and they're like, why, why are they watching Earth? Like, it's supposed to be, you know, an end to suffering and eternal joy. And you get to you get to praise God forever, <laughs> which is like I look, I love praising God. I wish I had uh, more hours in the day to do so. I can't wait till I'm dead. And that's all I do. And just look at people. <laughs> I don't know. It's on like, a, while you're sitting at a garden table on a cloud. Yeah, I I didn't, I don't think I even pictured furniture. I think I just pictured people just standing there, like just standing around this white space, like Greek gods. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It seems boring. They did a bad job of sketching it out for you. It was like Joshua Tree before civilization. <laughs> like when people, the first people who were like, oh, "We're going to make Joshua Tree a place." That's what heaven's like to me. <laughs> And people won't shut up about either one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, folks. Aaron, I want to talk to you just forever. Me too. But it's. I mean, I want to talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to me forever. I feel like I talked more than you did. I don't think that's the case at all, because I was sitting here going, when is Aaron Gibson going to shut up? <laughs> that's all I do with me. Which means we talked equal amount of time, I bet. Do you ever find yourself when you when you're telling a story from your life or you're talking about something that you're you're passionate about or you've been thinking about a lot, you have that moment where you're like, You've been talking for a really long time. Yeah. This is not good. Why isn't why don't I have any real friends in the room to tell me to shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I fire all of my friends. You're f- <laughs> you're fired. If you can't check oh. me, you're not part of this relationship. <laughs> you didn't pass my test. Aaron Gibson, where can people find you online should they wish to find you and should they you wish to be found? My handles on social are very complicated. It's mm-hmm. Gibbler Tron, my last name if I was a robot. That's so right. never remember that. <laughs> And then if you, Put that out of your mind. The book is uh, feminazi.com. Yeah, I did hop on that URL. Yeah, man. Early in the game. Yeah, very smart. Thanks. Very smart. Now, and you did unsuccessfully try to sell it to several people. Yeah. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> he was the, the first person I went to. People will be hearing this December 3rd, Monday, December 3rd. Oh, what a great Christmas slash holiday gift. For- right. Someone in your life who's not smart enough to uh, see how they're being marginalized. There you go. You need jokes to get them involved in their own political process. Will it still be in hardback by that point? Yeah. When does a paperback come out? Great question. Thank you. And And I also also did the audio book. So if you want to hear me do Mike Pence impressions as a pirate, (laughs) none of the impressions are accurate. They're all way off. (laughs) 
I actually do want to hear that. I just finished the book. It is terrific. Thank you, Paul. I highly recommend it. It is hilarious and it's insightful and it has a lot of uh, very interesting information in it um, about the way things are done here in this country. And it also um, has some wonderful, touching stories of young Erin Gibson thanks, making Paul. her way in the world. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was great. It's a terrific book. Um, I need you to call my mom. Oh, I'll fucking call her. <laughs> my mom's my mom's like, I think this is problematic for the family. And I was like, I think you're reading way too much into it. She, guess what? You should have read Busy Phillips' book. Oh, you want to worry that's about the what family. <laughs> it's it's very honest. <laughs> I'll send her the book and I'll be like, it could have been worse. Yeah, yeah ex- exactly. <laughs> Shout out to Busy Phillips. Folks. We're going to take a break. During the break, we will procure a location for our improv from our guest, Aaron Gibson. And then we're going to meet our improvisers. Stay alive. No matter what occurs, I will find you. You know what? I feel like I know you pretty well. I feel like you wake up feeling achy, easily distracted, and forgetting things. (laughs) I'm right. You know why? You're not sleeping the right way. You're sleeping incorrectly. And I'm not mad at you, but you are responsible. You should have done something about it by now. But luckily, I'm here to help. A quality night's sleep makes all the difference in the world, and the right mattress is the key to getting proper rest instead of just laying down. That's what you were doing. You were just laying down. You weren't getting proper rest because your mattress is garbage. The Lisa mattress is the product of 30 years of experience and hundreds of hours of rigorous product testing. People were sleeping their asses off. Designed for body contouring and pressure relief, the Lisa mattress is perfect for all sleepers, even you, little sleeper. I love you. Shop conveniently online with free shipping and 100 nights to try the mattress in your own home. That's right. You don't have to go to a second location. You try it in your house where you sleep, where your children play with their toys. The mattress made by Lisa is backed by more than 12,000 five-star reviews and loved by more than 300,000 happy sleepers. Why isn't it 300,000 reviews? Some people are shy. Lisa also donates one mattress for every 10 sold so you can sleep easy and feel good about your purchase. Two things before you couldn't do at the same time. Right now, get $150 off the Lisa mattress plus a free pillow at lisa.com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout. This is Lisa's best offer, you guys. It's their best offer. Lisa.com slash PFT, promo code PFT. That's L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT, promo code PFT. Bill Cohen back to Spontanea Nation. We're all still here. Who's we? Well, I'll tell you if you give me two seconds. Folks, it is time to meet our friends from the world of Make Pretends. First, seated right next to me. It's been a minute, my friend. Been a minute, son. It is good to have him back. Jordan Black has returned to Spontanea Nation. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's good to be back, man. I mean, it's been hard. Paul F. Tompkins. What's the matter? What happened? Just changes, man. What changes are you talking like, about? Like, I talk different now. You do. I noticed. Um, can I just bring up the Mike Myers thing again? <laughs> yes, please. I <laughs> can talk about it forever. I have a problem with the new Halloween movie. Oh, I just saw it yesterday. Because... Um, what's her name? Jamie Lee Curtis. Sure. It's, JLC. It's, it's, they, they play her as her real age, as an older lady now. Yes. yes, yes, yes. But her brother would be like 12 or 13 years older than her. That's right. How can he run around? She's a, Basically, she's an old lady mm-hmm. who's being chased by Mike Myers. That's right. So Mike Myers is like got to be in his 70s. Here's the thing, though. People are, they're looking younger these days. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, True. as we have established... He never runs anywhere. He is not in a hurry. He's a very calm dude. He's very zen. That's true. They hold up the mask, the podcasters. He doesn't even turn around. And you know, Paul, in the first movie, that kid said, you can't kill the boogeyman. So there There you go. go. Do you know what I discovered? And I shared this on Twitter because I I thought I had seen the first Halloween movie. And then I realized as I was watching it, I'd never seen it. Oh, wow. And I think I'd just seen clips of it over the years. Mm -hmm. And um, that little boy looked so much like Amanda Plummer, the actress. (laughs) I don't remember that. It was strange. 
But well, also, he the you know he is bullied at school. Yeah, and then uh, he's carrying a gigantic pumpkin. <laughs> and then he's bullied to the point where he falls over and crushes this pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Now we have not seen it's not a jack o' lantern. We haven't seen that it's ca- yeah. been carved and it's got scooped out. It's I, <laughs> what what seems to be a blue ribbon winning pumpkin <laughs> at a county fair. You, and this you, small child falls over and crushes it. You feel like that's not real. <laughs> Is that what's bothering you about this part of the movie? That, that's the part that bumps it, you? Well, this was early on. This was early on. It threw everything else into doubt. You judged everything else by that. Because I, we're, we're 10 minutes in. This kid crushes a pumpkin with his tiny little body. So then you're like, I can't buy anything this movie tells me now. Yeah. I can't believe it. Where'd this mask come from that Michael Myers is wearing? Right, that's, I know. You know they, they made a bunch of these white masks Well, you know, the hair. You know the mask. Yeah, 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 of course. Sure. Yeah, so. Absolutely. But yeah. Anyway, I, I just needed to... Let people know Mike Myers is in his 70s, so there's like no way he's still able to not be beat up. <laughs> I've beat up so many people in their 70s. Trust me, they'd go down easy. He seemed remarkably unperturbed by bullets <laughs> yeah. for a, for an, for a septuagenarian. And they don't ever explain where his powers come from, which I love. I love the first two Halloween movies, and I think I'm going to love this new one. Wait, but, you love the second one too? Oh, I, You know what I love about it? Because it <laughs> takes place the same night. That is. That's brilliant. I love that. That's what well, that's all I love. Then it go, yeah, okay. goes a bit off the rails right yeah, after that course, moment. Yeah, but that's what I love. I want all sequels to <laughs> yeah. start right after the credits rolled over. That's the right. Next. I don't care what. Yeah. If Ro- you can't. Hey, look. Minute two. It all goes to shit. Rocky two <laughs> should be Rocky getting, putting Get his stuff in his gym bag. <laughs> And the you know and getting ready to leave to go home <laughs> and deal with having lost the fight <laughs> to Apollo Creed. That should be right too. <laughs> Guy coming in saying, "Hey, we want to clean up in here." Can yeah. you? He's like, "Who parked my car? I gotta." I don't know. Did the valets leave? Who parked my car? <laughs> it should be that. That's the movie. Every movie should be that. Why did Rocky won? Why didn't we get to see Rocky park his car with the valet? <laughs> right. You know, but when you're leaving and it's like, you know, it's like you're being like at the form or whatever. It's like, oh, man, where did I park? It's such a big parking lot. Now that everybody's gone, I got to figure out in this huge place. Or did I park at M19 or X12? It's like, I didn't look because I was running late. Why do <laughs> movies cut all this stuff out? <laughs> my movies don't. I, would, would you read some of my screenplays? I have several. I remember ones. reading the one where there was several pages where the character was just asleep for the night. <laughs> yeah, because uh-huh. it takes eight hours to sleep. <laughs> you know, a good night. If you're sleep. lucky. If you're right. lucky, yeah. Jordan, I'm going to turn away from you <laughs> to look directly across from me. Whoa. You weren't ready for this, were you? <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Courtney is back. Yay! Yeah, cheering for herself. <laughs> Good for you. Thanks. Positive. Well, gotta be your own best friend. You gotta be your own best friend. <laughs> That's be own sad. Because <laughs> all their relationships end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotta be your talk. own best friend. Let's <laughs> There's a reason that song is a classic. Just... Stephanie, how are you? I'm good, man. I am good. Th- what? What? <clears throat> why are you good? Tell me. Tell me, tell me something nice. Well, okay. Jesus. Because I'm coming back from something that I never, ever imagined I would do. I, um, okay. Oh, orgy. Oh, my God. Orgy. Yes. Oh, God, guys. Keep it up in mind and, and take the pamphlets. Um, <laughs> orgy no. pamphlets. <laughs> no, I, I am a den mother. Oh, no, really? For the Scouts of America. Wow. Now, listen, I, okay, so I had... <laughs> issues, you know, like a lot of people did with the Scouts, but now um, they <laughs> include women, like uh, girls. Girl Scouts are better, though. Anybody, yes. No, but Girl well, Scouts can now be Boy Scouts, But this right? is for the this is yes. for the Boy Scouts, you're a dead mother? Well, it's called the Scouts of America. The yes. Scouts of America, Because okay. I have a little boy, and That's right. there's a super dad who's, who, who, like, made it all the way to, I think, Eagle Scout. It's you know what I mean? So you guys should have a conversation sometime. You should find out. <laughs> Jordan is tough. I don't want Jordan anyone to know me that well. I'm got, my own best friend. He got that new voice and he's... <laughs> <laughs> he will hijack my precious minutes of interview. You, <laughs> you wait and see. So there I was on a hot field in my little uniform with a neckerchief and a thing oh, and shit. patches. And I, th- so I'm coming back from that. I And I just, I just sometimes I think of like my, where my life is. And I just... <laughs> no, when you say patches... Are yes. these badges that you've earned, or these are just uh, these are just given to you? <laughs> they are badges. I'm sure badges is more pro- appropriate. Well, you get some to start with, like your right. your troop number participation, den number, <laughs> right. and anyone who's in the scouts, stop listening to me because I'm using the wrong term. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so juice box distribution. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 
Uh, in an emergency. <laughs> You'll be glad I got that. Did you learn? Did you have to learn like uh, uh, survival stuff? <laughs> well, first no. aid, anything well, like that? It's more at this point. It's more like the meeting's tomorrow. Read the email. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need three beach balls and beach towels, and we need like, we, and you just have like games, and it's all teamwork. And and what's funny is because I used to teach improv at the Groundlings, so I'm like, oh great, cool. We have all these like fun games to introduce people, and then. <laughs> these young little kids none of them signed up for improv none of them even want to speak out loud and I, I had to adjust so fast you would have like Jordan would have laughed so hard she'd do an improv show every week but I was just like alright what's your name okay you don't feel like it okay okay okay, okay. and then like my okay just kept getting quiet like okay 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 I see I see <laughs> And then, and then the other den leader was like, you know, it's cool. It's like where, wherever you're at. Like if you don't feel like participating, that's cool, man. Like cleaning up my gross yeah. act. Which if, was you just think, like, if you think this is stupid, go I, ahead say it. Because I'm, like, I'm like, speak up. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, hey, and hey, man, if you're not in the mood, that's where you're at. And, I, and then like all these emails were like, when you said if you're not in the mood, that's where you're at. That was amazing and inspiring. <laughs> I was just like, oh. I was like, I got it. I got, I got my note. So today I was a lot less like Stephanie forward. <laughs> wow. I, was just, I was like, we are all here. We are all winners. You know what? You're here. <laughs> round of, another round of applause for being here. <laughs> so, like, wow. It seriously is. It's like it's checking. Like everything about everything about being mom or whatever is just like checking my personality. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> like down, 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 down. What you think is a two is not a two. Keep it at a two. Keep it at a two. These are children. <laughs> so that's what I. That's where I'm from. All right. That's where I'm coming from. Any thoughts on Michael Myers? Uh, uh, I, okay, I was thinking. All right, I, here we I, go. I, I, I had a dream like years oh. ago, maybe 10 years ago, like or whatever, when I was like, completely, it had to do with like being completely broke and just like no hope at all. And I had a dream that Michael Myers was chasing me and my sister around this old dilapidated house. And I was just like, <laughs> and I felt like optimistic for some weird reason. And then finally I was like, I'm just going to let him catch me. And he like gave me this weird hug. <laughs> Like he just like bent his body over mine oh. and just gave me a hug to the point where I was like, that's what, he, that's all he wanted. And, <laughs> and it was so like Michael Myers <laughs> is this business. <laughs> Michael Myers is this business is like the fact that I could not figure out how to like put food on my own tiny table. <laughs> and like, I just felt like in danger. Clearly, oh my all the God. <laughs> and all he wanted was a hug. <laughs> so that's, I'll stop there. <laughs> I dreamed a dream of days of night. And it's I like, dreamed that I hugged Michael Myers. Gross mask and his boots, like a steel, steel toed boots. Could like, you smell the mask in your dream? Well, all the like mustiness and death, I was just like, just accept it. <laughs> He's trying. Did he say anything to you? No. Oh. I, wish, I wish I could. E even in your dreams, he stays true to form. <laughs> <laughs> and he never ran. Stephanie, I'm going to look away from you. Uh, I would. Uh, I would. Next to you, look my kitty way. corner from me, meow. Look my way. This guy, come on. Keep a looking. <laughs> I'm over here now. I think everyone knows who it is by now. I've moved over here now. <laughs> Gary it's Anthony Gary Anthony Williams. Williams. <laughs> 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 I am Gary Anthony Williams. You sure are. I feel good about me. A uh, couple of notes for a few. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's get right into it. <laughs> Number one, the human head lives approximately, seriously, 15 seconds after being attached from the That's too long. That's too long. Literally 15 seconds. That's I read terrifying. a thing where a guy was in a car with his friend. His friend got his head cut off oh in God. this accident. And he looked at his friend, and his friend looked at him with confusion. And he went through all those stages of, oh, oh my God, I know what's going on. First, it was like, what the hell? Then it was worry, fear, confusion, like all those whole stages. Then he finally is like, fuck, it's over in those 15 seconds. Oh, that's why? 15, that, why that's why they used that? to hold their heads up. Uh, hold their heads up. On a, why did you tell us that's that? That's a lot. Uh, second, uh, the thing with the uh, that pattern on the back of the neck. I, yeah. And you know, you know me. You know I'm married to a white. Lady. I know you so are. I, I get. Ooh I, la la. Stop I bragging. <laughs> but I think that's only on the back of white men's necks. Ooh, black guys, we get this other. We get the roll. roll. We get we the get roll. Oh right. <laughs> but here's what I noticed as a kid. Um, 
<laughs> if you bought like sunbeam honey buns or maybe even hostess, I'm, I'm dead serious. If you flip them over, yeah, whatever they cook them on, it has that same pattern mm-hmm. on the back of white dudes. Oh, neck. okay, it's that same pattern. All right, I, so, I want to see it. I want to see it. So I'm gonna be. It, uh, if, I'm, I'm going to the supermarket right after this. Okay, yeah, I swear. If you if you go, do they still make sunbeam? Uh, Sunbeam. Uh, that might just be uh, honey Midwest and It South. may be the South. But Hostess probably has that same white man neck probably. pattern. Uh, and th- that was really all of the notes they I They used had, to call bro. them white man necks, right? Yeah. yeah. That, was yeah. The, that was the colloquial Fro- frosted name. Frosted white man yeah. neck. Frosted white man neck. <laughs> now, and, be sure to get uh, a yeah. pack of frosted white man necks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because grandma and them are coming over for, uh, they're coming over after church. And I just want everybody to know that I I love everyone. You do. I love everyone. Including me. That's right. Yeah. The most important person yeah. I love. Because I wish I knew that song that Stephanie Courtney sang. <laughs> when every other relationship ends, remember, you're your own best friend. Because <laughs> 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 the thing is. In that song, they will end. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They might. That's right. It doesn't say if. No, it says it's when. when. They are going to end. Remember when every other relationship ends. Yours. Well, how did it go? I, I lost it already. When every other, other relationship, relationship ends. ends. Remember, remember you're, you're your, your own, own best friend. friend. Good remember advice. When all, how, how is it? When, when ever. Other, other relationship, relationship ends. ends. Remember, Remember, you're your own best friend. friend. Okay, here we go. Ah, all together now. Yeah. Whenever other relationship ends, remember you're your own best friend. Do you know what? I think I think we need the harmonies. Right after remember, we definitely need harmonies. <laughs> right after remember, yeah. we need like a little blink blink, like that one, something like that. I mean, Yes, yep. exactly. Before okay. we okay. go into your here, you're gonna take the bottom. Yeah, take the bottom. Yeah, you take the top. I'll take the fifth, <laughs> and I'll plead it. I just learned those terms. I don't know I how to my, sing. Them. I hope okay. my mic's not too boomy for this. <laughs> I hope mine's go. too hot. <laughs> I hope my mic is too hot. <laughs> I'll try to take right. the middle. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Here we go. When, when, when every other relationship ends, remember you. No, what what did we You're, just discuss? I'm so sorry. What did we just discuss, guys? I, I, I was, was gonna have to remember. I was so me. panicked. I wish people would show up to rehearsals. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So <clears throat> remember, throat> throat> remember, remember, never when yeah, every okay. when every <clears throat> other okay. relationship ends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> When every other relationship ends, remember you're your own best friend. Oh, Folks, boy. we're going to take a break. When we return, we will reveal the location for our improv provided to us by our guest, Aaron Gibson, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Hey, Spontonians, I want to keep you apprised of some live dates happening very soon. Sunday, December 9th. It's finally happening. Wild Horses and Super Ego the crossover event of the century. We're doing a show we've never done before called Mixed Company. This is going to be a dynasty typewriter downtown LA. We are going to be improvising a play like one of those (laughs) relationship plays where a group of friends get together and they have revelations and secrets and stuff. I can't, I can't wait. We are all very excited to be doing this. That is Sunday, December 9th at Dynasty Typewriter downtown. Then Saturday, the 15th of December, of course, Pacast Blast. This is going to be an all-day affair at the a- theater at the Ace Hotel, my favorite venue in Los Angeles. Check out this lineup. Teacher's Lounge Live. Off Book Live, Throwing Shade Live, Doughboys Live, The Andy Daily Podcast Project Live, 
and Comedy Bang Bang Live. This is going to be a fantastic event. I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I'm going to be guesting on Comedy Bang Bang and on the Andy Daly Podcast by The Project. Maybe I'll wander through other people's shows as well. <laughs> that won't be annoying for anyone. Then Tuesday, the 18th of December, the Bajillionaires are back doing improv at UCB Franklin. Come check us out. 9.30, Tuesday, December 18th. There you go. And don't forget, Eben Schletter's Fantastical Musicorium, Eben Schletter's own podcast, where he does whatever the hell he wants, is available now. And this is a good time to check out Eben's uh, Christmas album. He put out a holiday album, which is pretty amazing. So check that out. Eben's got a lot of good stuff, guys. He's got a theremin album. It's, it's, yeah. you got to check him out. EbenSlutter.com. You'll hear the jingle at the end. When every other relationship ends, remember, you're your own best friend. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. Oh, we've done done it now. We have procured a location for our improv. From our guest, Aaron Gibson. And now it is time to reveal that location. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene. We need to travel into the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we go into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. But you can't stay in the past forever, folks. Hear that, ghosts? Let's say we want to get back from the flashback. Got to get back in time. Or anytime we move forward in time, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final button moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We use this meanwhile button. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. <laughs> and now, my friends, it is time to reveal the location for our improv provider. with my guest, Eric Gibson. That location is 1910's home being renovated in Hudson River Valley. 1910's home being renovated in Hudson River Valley. We take you now. To 1910's home being renovated. That's a really, really. Oh, it is a mess in here. I can't wait till this is done. I, uh, don't, I don't want to haul any more lo- labor, lumber from hey, the. Are you okay? I, Why? I told you to wear a mask when you're painting. <sighs> Eleanor. Guys, Eleanor. The road from Poughkeepsie is a bumpy one. And sometimes the mask gets in the way of my driving skills. Okay, no one, no one ever said you should wear the mask while you're driving. Who moved my door? Oh, was that you, Eleanor? I, I just felt a cold breeze and a dread. No, my door used to be here. I'm just going to walk through this wall thing. What the hell is going on, Eleanor? Are you doing some sort of vaudeville act? <laughs> You know, I put those days behind me when you said a woman belongs alongside a man's reconstruction business. I do remember saying that at our wedding. I have to tell you, your wife is getting a bit uppity. Well, I know, but that will soon be over because she's going to join me in my reconstruction business. So Good. Uh, That's where a woman belongs. Yes, but huh? until she does that, yeah. there's nothing I can do. Understood. I mean, she's going to say whatever she wants to say. Understood. Are you coming to my final performance at Charlie O'Charlie's? I can't. I have to chew my long leg gum. I have to chew my long leg gum. I'm, are you saying... I just had a stroke. <laughs> I thought he was talking about legumes, but he he threatened to chew, <laughs> chew his, his own, own leg, leg off. off. Yeah. You know, I'd love that you'd rather like have a meeting of the minds with that guy than talk to me about my final show that you didn't come to. Well, you know, I I meant to come to that show at Charlie O'Charlie's, but... <laughs> 
Hey, man, uh, you know your wife's uh, final show us tonight. I thought maybe we'd go check her out. We're not doing anything. Can I tell you about that show? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because I, I, I figured it must be good if it's your wife and you're going. Let me tell you something. Love my wife. Big fan. These shows, they're, uh, I don't know, they, they're not the greatest. They... This is the song that I wrote for my husband, and he knows the part he's supposed to sing. When love is on the wing, and everybody sings, I hear. Boo! Oh my god! I can't! I can't do it anymore! Show canceled! Yeah, I think she, uh... I think she writes me into stuff. Uh, and but you, she never tells me in advance. And you haven't been to... Maybe she wanted to surprise you. She assumed you'd come open at night because you're her husband. Oh, no, she surprised me once. Everyone, please turn all the lights onto the front row, third seat What's from the left. This what? is my husband, oh. and we're going to make up a song on the spot. Oh, what? <laughs> this would be a very good song. Charleston. When I do the Charleston, when I do the Charleston with you, take it. But when you do the Charleston... When you, when He's you better than I thought he'd be. And worse than I thought. Mm, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I actually got pretty good reviews. Oh, okay. Um, that's not what I heard. Um, listen, am I getting paid today? Because I, I got to go feed my uh, baby. Let's talk over here. <laughs> the important thing is we're still together. We got a dynamite marriage because we do us. <laughs> oh. What is it? Who is it? No, is anyone in there? Hello? Oh. Hello? Come yes. on Hello, in. Hello, come on Hi. in. Hey. Come in, sir. Hi, Paul Tommy from next door. <laughs> Paul Tommy. Paul T Tommy. T U M M E H. Paul Tommy from next Wait, door. What is it spelled again? T U M M E H. That's Paul. And my last name is T O M M Y. Tommy. Like, like Tummy. <laughs> yes, Paul Tommy from next door. Oh. He spelled it two different ways right. in under a minute. Yes. Uh, anyways, I. <laughs> Came by to. So that was intentional. Yes, okay. yes. Right. You know what? My wife always said, Polly, you never do anything the same way twice. And since then, I make sure I don't. Is it Paul or Polly? Yep, yeah, see, that's it. Never the same way twice. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Polly, your, yes. your lovemaking seems so different this time. Oh, yes, yes. I'm trying it in the same room with you now. But it's never the same way twice. It, I. It confuses me. Oh, oh well, that's how things are. Who moved my croquet pitch? What? What's going on, Polly? My croquet pitch. Uh, Polly, croquet is someone pitch. here? I'm not sure. I'm simply not sure. Uh, anyways, I um, wanted to give you guys a heads up, as it were. A Ooh. warning, as it were. Uh, Both? A bit of foreshadowing, as it were. Ooh. Now you've got our attention. <laughs> This house, this 1910 beautiful home that you're standing in. Yes, right here in the Hudson River Valley. Yes. Something evil happened at this home. Well, what? It's a site of many Revolutionary War war sites, so I would imagine that's something. I wish it was a... <laughs> uh, 1862, yeah. Well, it sure uh, is a good year. Yes, sir, it is. Listen here. Mm -hmm. There's a war brewing. Uh huh. It's gonna put brother against brother. Mm -hmm. It's gonna pit them against each other too. Mm -hmm. Put and pit. Are, are you saying it's a sort of a, a revolutionary type of war? Yes, uh, Mister. Okay, but it's gonna be a little civil as well. Right, but it's, so it's not the revolutionary no, it's war. Not. That it's already more, happened. That has passed. <laughs> This one will be more of a civilized war. Right. Oh, civilized war. I guess. But anyway. I, I, I just want to scrounge an invite to that. That sounds fun. No, it won't be. <gasps> because everybody in this here house is not going to get to see the end of the war. <gasps> but you will get to see the end of my one-man show. I uh, knew this was a trap. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to warn you. Be careful here. Be real careful. Well, be yeah. careful. We heard you. Be careful. Be real careful. No, no. We heard you say be real careful for emphasis. Yes. I'm afraid that wasn't me. I, I must go now. I must. Hey, welcome to the neighborhood. Uh, welcome to the that neighborhood. What an odd man. Well, if I hear that voice again, I'm going to name him Echo, and he'll be my best friend. Ooh, that's a good idea, because he says the same things that other people say. It's, it's a perfect name. It's true. Now... He warned us that the house was evil, 
and that we should be careful, but he didn't really outline like what might have happened before that we should look out for. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, should how we, are we supposed to be careful? Yeah, uh, should we just be careful with what we say? Should we wear some heavy shoes to not stub a toe? I mean, that's perhaps what I'm don't oh. talk during the show. How's everyone tonight? What is happening? I'm clapping for you. Thank you. I'm good. Ooh. Listen, a long time ago, I was a young oh, boy. God. Working on my father's father's farm. Paul? Paul? It's time to milk the cows. Son, you better go on out there and get the milk. But then we fast forward to the year I fell in love with I'm going to go watch TV. (laughs) There. (laughs) Oh, a monk marathon. Listen, are we going to watch this, which I want to do, or are we going to talk about that weird ghost? Well, you know what? I was scared at first. Then when he launched into the show, I sort of felt like, is this as scary as it gets? Because I think I can deal with it. You know, as, as being someone from show, I'm show folk, yes, I could have told him that the first 30 seconds is imperative it's that you grab our crucial. attention. It's crucial. It's crucial. You don't get it back. No. No. Oh, oh. oh I think Hello, it's me again. Knocking on the TV the room small door. Small tummy. tummy. I'm outside your door. The yes. TV room come, door. Come in, come in, Mr. Tummy. I'm, I never open the door for myself. I have a germ phobia. What Could a you? fun quirk. <laughs> it's not as fun as you think. Hold on a second. So yes. you're, you're not prepared to open any doors? Any door. <laughs> I stood outside the hospital <laughs> when my wife was getting birth for three hours. I would not open that door. Sir, get out of the way. We I, are trying to get a gurney in here. I, 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 want to, I want to get out of your way, but I want to go in and see my wife. Well, make up your mind. We have to get in. What? Well, Doctor, I, if there's any way we can hold the baby in till my husband gets here. We can't. Look, we got a high turn over here at this hospital. We got to get that baby out. It's, I just really want him to be here, I feel. Uh, if right. you want that baby to be a Libra, I would say push. Right. All right, I guess my, I just have to tell Paulie all about it. He's right outside if someone just let him in. He just mm. Was he a vampire? No, he just won't touch any doors. What a weirdo, and I'm a doctor. <laughs> So you see, it's a long, it's a long history I have. I just wanted to warn well, you. Well, you told us one story. <laughs> really? I, I literally have time lapses. I thought I had told you several. No, no you told us one. just the one well, story. Re- <laughs> regardless, <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. No, forgive I, I just him. wanted to warn you. Hmm. If you hear that ghost, it'll lure you in with a slightly boring story of a show. It's what happens after that. So what happens after that? Wait, <laughs> well, yeah. just just to be clear, yes. was the ghost telling a story about a show? A I thought story that was about a show. show that it was in. Mr. Tummy Tummy, I have to be honest. <laughs> Please, it's Paul Tummy. I can't sit through that show, no matter how wonderful. Did someone say show? Oh shit! Here's when it gets scary. I'm afraid I have to go. Could someone? No, hold on a second. I, I, I will not open that door for you, Mr. Open, Tummy. I will Please, not open the door. just open the door we and let me out. will not open the door. I remember the second show I saw. Here's the nearest window. It is a show. Oh, he's done. He doesn't have a germ problem with windows. We sat on the back of the wagon. There was straw everywhere. Hey, hey, hey! Beginning, middle, end. Beginning, middle, end. <laughs> And then the performers came out, and they were in rapture. It, let's cut right to the talk back. I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Is this the show, or are you telling a story about another I, show? My show is about a p- person, a character that I play, telling the story of a show he saw. Why don't you just do the show? Yeah, that would, is the show. I would spend no, good but, money to see the show. But I feel like that adds a layer to it that's so unnecessary. You're telling, so because you're, you're I can't just you're recalling plagiarize show. someone else's show. So, so I, it's a real show? So I show? tell their show. Can I, can I tell you something? Can I tell you some people that get, yes. will never lie to you? Yes. A, a live audience will never lie to you. Oh, that's true. And we want to leave. We are both and we live here. You gotta wait for the end. I gotta say, it's I, worth it. I gotta say, you're t- you're just taking an existing play, <laughs> yes. and you're just telling the story exactly. of going to see it. So you do understand the concept. I don't. I feel like it's still sort of plagiarism. I, fe- I feel like I'm getting through to my audience. <laughs> you are not. 
Hey, uh, Sheena. Please step into my office here. Yeah. I'm seriously concerned about the Hudson River Theater Company. We haven't had a fresh show here in years. Uh, you, well, you know me. I just want to do Phantom. I understand that, Sheena. There's a young couple who moved in a few doors down from Paul Tummy, maybe next door to him. She was an actress at some point. I'd like to get her skills on the Hudson River Theater Company stage. If I could get her and maybe one other, I, I don't know, Sheena. Maybe I've said too much. Maybe I've What if we did our performance of The Mystery of Edwin Drood? And you invited her over under false pretenses. <laughs> keep and talking, then we keep talking. Then we pushed her out on stage and... <laughs> That's enough. In front of a live audience. That's enough. Get her on the horn immediately. I'd like to speak with her. I don't get to make it suggestions. <laughs> Oh, gosh, my phone's on silent. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? This is the Hudson River Valley Theater Company. Okay. Uh, you're calling me, so I am I await eagerly. <laughs> who's, a, who's on this line? Yeah. Who's on this line? Hello, is this a party line? It's not it's a party. It shouldn't be. This is not my, a party line. Am I on the wrong line? Uh, I can clear it up. I'm, I got the AT&T lowest package. It is a party line. <laughs> well, I'm going... I, I have... Okay, I, I have other things to do right now. I cannot put up with this chicanery. I don't have anything to do. I'll just listen. <laughs> okay, well, get, bring bring me the news and on. Um, hello. Okay, we, this yes. This is the River Valley Theater Company. My name is Lois. We're calling because we heard you're an actor. Is that correct? Curtis, uh, hold, uh, hold I, it down. I'm on the phone. I gave, Baby, I'll hold it down when I'm ready to hold it down. I I've gave that all up. I've been trying to cast this woman in this well, play. So just I'll hold, hold it down then. We hear that your house might be haunted by a show. Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, would you consider stepping out of retirement, joining these shows together, because we need to fill out our season? Okay, <laughs> you know. Curtis is a ghost. It's not the got, devil, so don't be nervous. You got me. That is my Achilles heel. I would love to help, and I love to perform. How are we going to get all our ghost characters to the, your theater? I thought you would take care of that. What? This is your show, right? You know what? I have a friend from college who's a psychic. <laughs> so you're saying... There's an opportunity for me to perform with Hudson River Valley Theater Troupe. Yes, if you would, and you and your friends would like to get into this shoebox my friend yes. says is haunted. Magical. I don't have friends. I'm my own best well, friend. Well, then, well, you know what? You're that one, one me, man ghost. I'm right. a one man ghost. Reminds me of my ringtone, which is... What? <laughs> my ringtone is... Doo -doo 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 there, there's doo -doo -doo. possibly a... a <laughs> There's possibly a dolphin ghost that I can maybe persuade. If you can get a golf, dolphin ghost. To or a golfing ghost. <laughs> a, a golfing oh, uh, there are ghost. quite a few golfing ghosts. They golf, but they're at the golf course. Is it a course? I guess what I'm saying <laughs> is... <laughs> it is commonly known as a course where golf is played, yes. What are you doing, young man? You're not allowed in here. It's a golf club. Uh, is it a club or a course? I'm uh, sure. Wait a minute. What do you do? Do you work here? Stop trying to peek inside. You'll never know what happens here. Never, never! You guys have omelets. Excuse me, is the golf court open? <laughs> yes, it is. Sir. I knew it wasn't a golf Oh, excuse me, how about the golfing area? Is that open? The area is back into the left, sir. Where's the golf pitch? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, basically, uh, I've never directed a show before. Yay. Um, but well, don't, I don't know why that garners applause, but, uh, I think the best way to kind of join your two strengths together is if you start talking about the show, right? Like you do. I can do that. I have experience. Yes. We're very well aware, but then honey, you would act out the show that he's talking about. Why wouldn't I? My body's my instrument. So basically... Uh, it would start with, uh, is, is you know, there, I, I remember. Is there a copy? That's a theater word. Is there a copy? Well, you're providing all the. You're, yeah. Words. Okay. Here's, here's what it'll be. It'll be, uh, is copy a theater word? Yep. <laughs> It's not an advertising word. It's like golf court. <laughs> and an I, I have a question. Is there a skirt or a towel you could wrap around your mist? Yeah, that is graphic. I, mean, I, I don't know who's going to be the audience. That's all I'm thinking about. 
Maybe well, your unfinished business was putting your clothes back on. I, I will talk to the tailoring department. That's a theater word as well. Oh, boy. I think, oh boy. I think it's wardrobe, but I don't <laughs> Could you excuse care. us for just one second? I need yes. to talk to my wife. Dumb as a... Hey, um, yes. I don't think he knows anything about the theater at no, all. No, but the only thing he does know is don't stop talking. That's the only thing <laughs> yeah, he does true. know. That's true. Also, he tried to give me an unsolicited back rub. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> You, you work so hard. And, yeah, I do. It's a know, lot of work restoring this house. And, and also as the director of our play. You what's, know, uh, like, what's, what's happening now? What's happening? Well, I just feel like you need to relax a little. So. Uh, this is actually making me the opposite of relaxed. You know, in the theater. Oh, there's my ringtone. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Huh? I know. Thanks, Careless Whisper. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's what I think should happen. You start your show like you usually do. I remember I went to this show. Then you just shut up. <laughs> she starts doing the show, right? And then periodically yes. you interject with, and then here's another thing that happened in the show. And then she acts it out. Do you so see where like I'm going? like a narrator. Yeah. Like a narrator who gives no details whatsoever. All right. I can't wait. Huh, it's opening night of the show, and I got to be honest. As your neighbor, I'm as nervous as a cat full of buckets. <laughs> All the fire exits are packed with townsfolk. Simply everyone from the Hudson River Valley is here tonight. Polly, yes. I, I, why didn't you wait for me? You drove off to the oh, show without me. I was jittery as a dog full of... Uh, well, I brought the baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. Hold, will you hold the baby? Yes, of course. It's of course. full of germs. That's fine. I'm only worried about doorknobs. <laughs> Mr. Tommy, is this your uh, wife? Oh, yes, child? this is my beautiful Hello. wife. Hi. Hello there. Hi. Hi. My name is Amberlene. Oh, I bet it is. No, but how, how does that work? Hmm? That, that you bet money on a man's wife's name. Oh, it's I, I used to work at a carnival. <laughs> oh, and, uh, really? <laughs> step right up, step right up. Yes, if you are married, I will bet you I can guess I'm your married, wife's name. I'm married over here. Jonathan, oh, yes. we do not have enough money for this. We certainly do, darling. Oh. Here's everything we owe. All right. And tell me, what is your wife's name, sir? He's not going to Friend. What is it? Friend. Friend. Yes. Okay. Uh, give me just one second. I have to go to the county. I will take that bet, by the way, and I'll go to the county <laughs> records department and see if her birth certificate checks out. So wait here for approximately. <laughs> it's so cold. The carnival packed up and left days ago. I don't think we should trust what he said anymore. I can't help it, darling. I put everything we owned on this bet. <laughs> hey, he's here. He is. I just got back. <laughs> Yes, your name is Fran. I bet that it was. You son of a I'll guy. take that money. There's that Thank money. Thank you very much. I can't believe this works. Uh, that is interesting. That is a great story about your past and how you learned to know people's names because you would go into the county register's office and find it. I feel like I'm a storyteller, too, in a way. Because you just told my story? Yep. Guys, one minute till curtain. Thank oh you, curtain. I don't know what that means. I'm in the audience. Does that mean I have to do something? No, no. We no, just sit here and be entertained. Darling. That's for the performers. Yeah. Can the, the baby way. stay, or does the baby have to step outside? The baby has to step outside. Okay, there's no one to watch it. Is no, it's gonna be okay, darling. The baby could, if you, if you want, you can hold the baby up to the little window. <laughs> No, let's just leave the baby outside. Tonight's for us to enjoy. Oh, you're such a romantic. Oh, I know, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, please put out your cigarettes and meet your neighbor to the left and right. Get comfortable, get to know him, because we're about to start our show. Ladies and gentlemen, the mystery of Edwin Drew with additions. <laughs> <clears throat> Sitting in my father's den. Okay, shut up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit. <laughs> and then my father would come in and he'd say, "Why aren't you out working the fields, boy?" I'm just gonna take this decanter from the set and pretend it's a scythe. I paid money for this. This isn't what I was expecting. Amberlene, are you enjoying yourself? I'm having mixed emotions. I'm I'm starting to worry about the baby, Tom, pa, Polly. Not, not I. <laughs> well, gang, I've got the reviews. <laughs> Yay! Well, I hold the celebration. <laughs> um, they're not great. <gasps> they're not so, they're, great. so they're just good. <laughs> <laughs> Portraits, words on my part. 
They are uniformly negative. Wait a minute. We have been living in a house full of rubble. I needed some good news. We I, have halted our construction for this. Darling, I, I I wish I could say that wasn't a gigantic mistake. Oh, oh, I know who this I is. I know who this is. Come, Come in, in, Mr. Mr. Tommy. Tommy. You know I can't That's open the door. That's right. We know you can't. Then I'll say what I have to say from outside the door. Yeah. Remember years ago at a little fair? Remember? There was give, me, a, give me a little more to go on. <laughs> there was, a man, us, there was I mean, a man there. Took all of this guy's money. <gasps> the Hello? fair with the man. Could you, um... I bet you can't guess my wife's name. It's Fran. Oh, do you remember that guy? I do remember that, that guy. guy. Is was, he with you? That guy was me. What? <gasps> you did a voice? Paul Tommy never does anything twice the same way. <laughs> Since that day when my wife and I lost all our cash, I couldn't wait for you to see your eyes again. I bought a house right near the place you were buying. I set up a ghost trick with you. I did it all. Now, your wife has failed, failed horribly. <laughs> Do you know what, sir? Do you know what that means, sir? It, no, no, I don't. <laughs> it means that you're going to have to forfeit on your mortgage. That means everything you took from me all those years ago goes back to me. It's true. Mr. Tommy visited yesterday, and he said, just put me in your will. We were laughing, and I, I had had Azima, and I put him in the will, and I'm sorry. What? Wait, he, after I'm, one Zima? Let me tell you something. Oh. It was old. It fermented even more. I don't care. I remember a Paul Tommy from when I was a boy in the 1800s. Oh. He died. Make it short. <laughs> He died in the fields where my father would grow corns. C corns? Yes, it was more than one corn. He wasn't a crazy I person. I think it's just corn. You know, it's more than one corn because you only no, have one I corn. You I can't make any money. No, but I mean, it's... It's, it's a lot of corns. It's plural. Forget it's it. a lot of corns. Types of corn? <laughs> Honey. Paul Tommy and his wife <laughs> died in a corns hurricane. Mr. Tommy. Now you see why I can't open the door. Hmm. Because you're a corn ghost. Yes. Corn. Yes, I am. We Sorry. had to invite him in. A corn's ghost. It all makes sense. Of course. Yes. But wait a so minute. So wait, what, yeah, what do, you, what do you care about the money for? Exactly, because if you're in the will, but you're dead, we're alive. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. You know, acting was so much more simpler than being a civilian. Why did you come to the play? <laughs> why did I come to the play? Yeah. The cornfield holds that secret. Wait a minute. I'm remembering now. The Hudson <laughs> River Valley Theater was built on A an old cornfield. Corn Quick, we've got to get over there. Spirits. Spirits of the cornfield. <laughs> It's me, a house flipper. Finally, you've made it here. What do you want with us? Mr. Tubby. Yes. Release this building, don't you understand? It's time for you to move on. Go on to your next plane of existence. There's no future for me there. What do you mean? There's what? no one who loves me there. Oh, that can't be true. How do you know? I died being my only friend. My only friend. But wait a minute. As the old song goes, when every other relationship ends, yes. you're your own remember, best remember, remember, remember. Isn't that funny? I forgot that part. <laughs> remember, you're your own best friend. But it doesn't say how those relationship ends. Some relationships end when somebody dies. <sighs> so any friendship that you had before could have been ended by death, and there might be. Tons of friends waiting for you. Waiting there for me in, in, the, in the next great place. Beyond. Yes. Like me. <laughs> Who's this? My wife, friend. Your wife, the one from the Cornsfield who from died? From the Cornsfield, and then we came back years well, later at the I, fair. I, sorry, and, uh, can I? You came yeah. back as a ghost at the at fair? At the fair. We were fair ghosts. But what you about me, Polly? Married, you were a married ghost at the fair. I was a married ghost. Then you remarried, remarried this other living Amberlin, person. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't get your whole thing. I never do anything the same. Right so our, ba oh, our he baby. Said it, he said it before and he said it again. Our baby's half ghost. I hope. She's not mistreated by the other children <laughs> for being different. You've, you've said something I've never thought about. I do have friends in the great beyond, I suppose. I just need to take that 
Take that step. But what about our baby? I'll take half of the baby. That's fair. <laughs> I want to apologize to you, people who just came into the neighborhood to regentrify it. <laughs> and I, like an old stubborn ghost of a fool, tried to block you. Oh, Mr. Tummy. It's if all right. You, when, and when, I tried to do my show. No, we, no, yes. we don't. But that was to help no. you to entertain no, you. No, we don't forgive uh, you for that. I don't know that that was to help us. If you'll just open the door for me, I will be on my way. Well, where'd this... Look, darling, this door. This ghostly door. We will open this door for you, Mr. Tummy. Again. <gasps> There's my grandfather. Oh. And my grandmother. And there's garden furniture everywhere. <laughs> oh. It's simply everywhere. Uh, Gosh, it's like a there's warehouse. A, that old scythe from the cornfield. Oh, I mean the corns field. <laughs> I'll be off now. The money that I was taking from you. Yeah. The will. Oh, gosh. Consider it all over. If you look underneath the third step of your home, when you get back there. Sure. There's a box of bouillon that I left years and years ago. <laughs> Come here. It, it's not... It's beef bullion. Oh, I fucking knew it. Ha, 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 And it all happened in a place called Spontanea Nation. Jordan Black, where can people find you? What do you want to tell people about? It is December. I will be on social medias at <laughs> Fake Jordan Black. When will this happen? This will happen as soon as this podcast ends. There we go. <laughs> and I will be at Sketchfest um, January 25th and 26th. Oh, Gary Anthony Williams and I will be doing our podcast, a live thing of our podcast, The Hills of Baldwin. The Hills of Baldwin. It's you an improvised. To, you did get to keep that name. We did get to keep it. That's fantastic. It's an improvised uh, black soap opera that takes place in Baldwin <laughs> Hills. And uh, Wayne Brady will be there as well. And then we'll be doing the black version on the 26th of January at Sketch Fest with Wayne Brady there, there as well. We so go. buy your tickets. Buy your tickets. Where can people buy those tickets? They can buy them at sketchfest.com. I, I think suppose. you're right. <laughs> So Just much, Google Sketchfest. So it's not my problem. It's your so, business. So, which so much doing. sass. <laughs> Gary Anthony Williams. Yeah. I'm going to be exactly where he said. There we go. On Instagram, I'm Gary Anthony Williams. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, I'm uh, Gary A. Williams. Look for me in very, uh, very soon upcoming episodes of uh, season two of I'm Sorry. There we go. That's right. Yeah. Gary's hilarious on that show. And uh, your podcast. Yes. Uh, the Hills of Baldwin, yeah. and also I'm putting out a new podcast called Day Drinking with Gary and Ellie. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Scoop. get ready for that. Get ready. Am I, uh, if this is December, is it already out or no? It probably is. It probably is. It probably is. Okay. All right. So look for that. Is that hey. Yes. <laughs> Social media. I don't really do it. You don't really do it. It's funny every once in a while you do it. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad because I have to be careful when I'm done. And it just it turns out to just be, just stay off it, Grandma. <laughs> just stay off it. Stay off it, Grandma. What do you think is a two is not a two. <laughs> What about shows? What can you tell people oh about? Oh, my gosh. Well, Jordan Black uh, and I are part of a wonderful group called The Crazy Uncle Joe Show. That's right. At the Groundlings, Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. And Paul I've Tompkins. done it. Will you please do it again? I will do it again. Oh, my gosh. Thank I have, you. I have to get back in shape to oh, do it again. Oh, you are in shape. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I do that. And then I also play a part on The Goldbergs. I play one of Beverly Goldberg's friends. And uh, so check that out if you will. There you go. And if you won't... Go fuck yourself. No, I'll know about it. I'll know about it. I'll know. <laughs> wow. Evan Schletter, he's Evan Schletter on all the things. Go to EvanSchletter.com. See, you got Evan Schletter's non spontaneous Asian work, such as Evan Schletter's Fantastical Musicorium, Evan's own podcast where he can do whatever the hell he wants, and I can't do anything about it. He got me. He tricked me. <laughs> How do you spell Evan Schletter? It's very simple. It goes like this. <laughs> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me? Well, I will also be at Sketchfest, as I always am every year. I love doing Sketchfest. It's my favorite festival. I'll be doing a bunch of goddamn shows like I always do. I don't have them all in front of me. They have not been all finalized yet, but go to pauleftompkins.com slash live, because by the time you're hearing this, 
I will know what I'm doing and it will be all written down for you. So please do check that out. It is going to be a lot of fun. And starting in the new year, I'm very excited to say both the bajillionaires improv show at UCB Franklin and work juice improv at dynasty typewriter are both regular things. We are doing monthly shows. So it's the third Tuesday of the month for the bajillionaires at UCB Franklin. And it is the final Wednesday of every month for work juice improv at dynasty typewriter, paulatompkins.com slash live. We would love to see you. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. <laughs> when every other friendship, friendship ends, ends, remember... remember. You're your own best friend.